Yo, what is going on everybody? My name is Dominic. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And for October, I wanted to get out some horror related videos. And today I'm going to be talking about George A. Romero's Dead Trilogy. I'm going to be reviewing all three of the films in the trilogy and then giving a quick ranking at the end. So if that sounds interesting, let's get right into the video. Hello everybody, my name is Dominic and I run this channel and I talk mainly about movies so if you love that sort of movie content you're going to love my channel and definitely should consider hitting that subscribe button. Also if you want to stay up to date with every single movie I watch and some rankings of specific franchises and even my favorite movies of all time definitely make sure to follow my letterbox. The link is always in the description of all of my videos and there you can find up to date reviews, rankings and ratings for almost every movie that I've ever Ever seen so for everything to do with my movie opinions letterboxd is definitely the place to go but if you want some more video kind of content then this channel is definitely for you so George Romero's dead trilogy is one of the most iconic trilogies of all time and all three of these movies are very influential in the horror genre specifically in the zombie genre and it's influenced a ton of things even into video game culture with Call of Duty Zombies. There is a map called Call of the Dead similar to uh, all these movies that end with dead. It's about the filming of a zombie movie and then how the zombies actually just turn into real zombies. That's kind of how the map goes. And then also even inside the map there is a mini boss which is George Romero which is a cool little easter egg and that just shows the extent of the influence of these films and I honestly do enjoy all three of these movies so I think this is an overall very solid trilogy and let's dive right into the individual individual films. Night of the Living Dead is an absolute classic of a film and I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm sure a lot of you guys have also seen this movie. This is the one that started them all. It really revolutionized horror as a genre and the zombie subgenre. It is absolutely fantastic as a film and I just absolutely excels with this low budget and small scale feeling. Obviously it is a big stakes because all of these zombies are everywhere and they're clearly imposing a threat as seen in the beginning of the movie when they already take a victim within the first like 15 minutes of the movie they already established their presence and their threat in this world so that is some great establishment obviously in the beginning of the film and then from then on out everything with this low budget feeling to it really gives it that sort of authentic vibe and also something that's extremely charming while maintaining a really really creepy atmosphere a lot of these characters are not incredibly well written but there is a few that are very well done and they're well done enough to where you care about all of them and want them to survive this crazy zombie apocalypse obviously as most people will say the standout here is Dwayne Jones as Ben he just absolutely kills it in this and even the supporting cast really do their jobs well. There's also some really good tension and banter between these characters because that is a really like normal thing that would happen if some zombie apocalypse just randomly broke out and you just happen to cabin up with a couple strangers that you're surrounded in this house by a bunch of zombies, you're going to be freaking out and you're going to be arguing about things, you're going to have disagreements. So that just gives it that aspect of realism which it really really excels and benefits from. The zombie makeup in this film is impeccable and honestly probably the best in the trilogy still. It is a little bit tough to tell if it is pretty similar to the other two movies in the trilogy but it just looks better because it's in black and white rather than color but again getting rid of all sort of factors aside just looking at how these zombies look and how realistic they seem these are the most realistic looking zombies of the whole trilogy and definitely the makeup that throws me off the least i said it once and i'll say it again this film really really benefits from the small scale nature of it and it really gives you that claustrophobic feeling of being stuck in this house and the entire movie is super tense on the edge of your seat and there is constantly twists and turns 
and questions of will they survive and tensions are really really high keep growing throughout the film and some really crazy stuff happens that really throws you for a loop and, and it honestly is pretty emotional at times. It's genuinely harder to come by in a lot of horror movies nowadays. A lot of them are just trying to scare you, which this movie does. This movie is really creepy, but it also puts you through some emotions because you care about these characters. And really to top it all off, it has one of the most iconic endings of all time. It is just absolutely fantastic. It's super, super chilling. I absolutely love Night of the Living Dead. A really, really strong start. I'm kind of hovering between scores right now, but I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10. And again, don't forget, if you want my updated scores for these movies and any other movie that you want to see from me, definitely check out my letterbox down below. You can just look up this film, go onto your followings list, and you will just see whatever I have this movie rated as. So if you want all of the updates on my movie scores, my reviews, and my list, definitely make sure to follow my letterbox down below. This one has gotten quite a bit of talk from a lot of people and from a lot of people I actually have heard that this is their favorite but then there are some people that also say that this is their least favorite. So this one kinda has that quality of being somewhat divisive to an extent. I do feel like most people do enjoy this film even if it is their least favorite but I personally do think this took quite a significant step down from the original. I think the actual concept of this film is really really cool and George Romero is a master at creating these concepts for these zombie movies and making them as claustrophobic but also creative as possible with this sort of shopping mall setting. It is it does create for a claustrophobic feeling but not quite as claustrophobic as Night of the Living Dead because in that they're restricted to this small little farmhouse and in this it's a whole shopping mall which is obviously much larger but in this there are zombies that eventually get into the shopping mall so that kind of builds onto it but regardless still the shopping mall setting is just really really creative and I absolutely love that about it. This one also has some pretty strong characters but the weaker characters are quite weak I would say um, but it does kind of balance out just a little bit. I would say on average the characters in Night of the Living Dead are slightly better but this one also has some pretty strong characters in the mix. This is the one that I find the zombie makeup to be the most jarring and kind of distracting. The really like blue coloring to them kind of threw me for a loop because as I said, obviously the only film I had seen in this trilogy before it was Night of the Living Dead, which was in black and white. So even if those zombies were uh, like had blue makeup, I couldn't tell. And then now in color, you can finally tell. It really threw me off for basically the whole movie. They didn't look super realistic because, I mean, I'm no expert, but I don't know if that's what zombies would look like if they were real. So that definitely threw me off a little bit. But yeah, for the most part, this movie, I don't have that much to say about it. Uh, it is pretty entertaining for the most part. It's cool to kind of see how they are resourceful in this shopping mall because they have such an abundance of materials and resources because they have this entire shopping mall to themselves basically. And it's really cool to see how they utilize these like secret passageways and each individual like store and section of the mall to kind of like trap the zombies and travel through the parts of the mall without getting intertwined with the zombies. It's really, really cool at some parts. And I would say, honestly, its highs are arguably higher than in Night of the Living Dead, but it doesn't have that same kind of creepy atmosphere that Night of the Living Dead has. And it just overall drags on far too long. It definitely could be cut down and it just has more boring and dull patches throughout the film. Having said this though, it is not anywhere close to a bad movie. I still had a pretty good time with the film and while I do think it is a little bit overrated because it has that coveted 4.0 or above rating on Letterboxd uh, on average so that means most people on average would rate this film an 8 out of 10 so in that case I do think it is a little bit overhyped but I still had a pretty fun time with this movie and George Romero just has a way to direct his films 
that really keeps you invested and entertained throughout the entire runtime despite it being a little too long. So regardless of all its flaws and its boring and dull patches, I still think this is a fairly average movie. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Alright, finally here we got Day of the Dead from 1985. This is probably the one that I was most skeptical about going into this kind of trilogy watch slash review because it's definitely the least talked about in the trilogy and probably the one that a lot of people say is their least favorite and it has the lowest average rating on Letterboxd at 3.7 which is by no means bad but it is a decent amount under the other two films so I definitely was skeptical going into this one. But my expectations were subverted. I actually really enjoyed this film. I think it really gave a high sense of stakes. Right from the beginning of the film, we get to see kind of where everything left off with the zombies kind of scattered everywhere, uh, them flying in on a helicopter, kind of scouting an area, and then having to leave right away because the zombies are attacking them. And then when they get back to the sort of military underground base that they're in, they got a whole horde of zombies waiting outside of a fenced off area it really establishes those stakes right off the bat and i think that is a really effective way that night of the living dead establishes its stakes as well as this film so i think already it is an effective horror movie and establishing that sort of impending sense of doom on top of this the zombie makeup is a little bit better i do think they sort of have that like bluey tint but they are more like subdued and kind of dulled down to a more like monotone color, which I think works much, much better. So this does improve a little bit upon the zombie makeup effect and the gore in this movie I found to be incredibly well done. That's something I didn't really talk about in the other two movies because they're not all that memorable. In Night of the Living Dead, it has some good gore, but that's not the stuff that I really remember. I remember the atmosphere, the creepiness, and a lot of the banter between the characters. It is a very character and plot driven movie more so than anything. And then in Dawn of the Dead, again, all three movies do have great gore effects, but Dawn of the Dead did have the most forgettable of basically everything. It's the movie that I remember the least overall. But Day of the Dead, I watched very recently and a lot of the gore effects did kind of stick out to me. They looked really, really well done. A lot of it was really disturbing. There was this one kill specifically where they literally are like ripping this dude's head off. And as his like vocal cords like stretch out, you can hear his voice like getting higher in pitched. It's really disturbing, but I thought it was really a cool kill and really well done. That attention to detail is absolutely fantastic and I just love that sort of thing. But even throughout, I think this has arguably the strongest characters in the trilogy and the stakes are at their highest. Tension is so tight, it is incredible. The tension between the scientists and then the civilians and then the military personnel who are kind of just sent there to oversee this scientific research facility and they don't want to be there because they know the zombies are going to come in at any time but these researchers want to research and do tests on the zombies to kind of see if there's anything they can do to kind of either subdue this apocalypse or even just completely eradicate it in some form so even just with this primary storyline even if it's sidelined occasionally i think it's a really interesting concept and really like lends itself well to really tense moments a lot of banter and arguing between the characters and a lot of disagreement a lot of separation a lot of like division between these characters and i think that is a really really perfect thing that george romero did really well in this film i'm saying the word really a lot so i apologize for that but i can't really think of another word to describe this i think laurie cardile actually gives arguably the strongest performance in the entire trilogy in this film she is really really good and like i genuinely think this is a great acting performance here and then across the board even the supporting cast are all really really well acted for the most part and it's very convincing and authentic and that's a lot of why i enjoy these films so much is because of how authentic and real they come across as which gives that sort of extra creepy effect but also just 
that really that enjoyment factor because a film that I can't really connect to in any way is typically not a film that I enjoy so that sort of brings these scores up definitely but above all else this film is really really well paced really entertaining really gory great kills and also really well written with some great characters and maybe the most claustrophobic out of any of these films because the zombies seem to have gotten more sophisticated in the ways that they kind of attack and there is just way way more than we've ever seen so far in this series so the stakes are arguably the highest the characters are arguably the best the gore is definitely the best like Overall, this is just an absolutely amazing movie, to be completely honest with you. So, Day of the Dead, just overall really entertaining, great, great horror and zombie flick. I absolutely love this movie. I'm going to also give this one an 8 out of 10. And now, moving on to the ranking. Easily coming in at last place, I have Dawn of the Dead. Again, not a movie that I dislike at all. I think it's pretty average, but it is generally the most forgettable movie in the trilogy for me, and one that I probably will be revisiting in the future just due to the fact that it was well directed by George Romero and the sort of shopping mall atmosphere is really, really well done, and I want to see if it does improve on rewatch. But again, a 5 out of 10 is pretty significantly the weakest score out of the trilogy. But still, not a movie that I dislike. This one's really, really hard for me, but unfortunately, I'm actually gonna have to put Day of the Dead in second place. I just, despite how much I love this movie, I couldn't really justify putting it in first place. Again, this has arguably the best of a bunch of different categories that are really important to this trilogy, but just as a whole, I think it was a little, little bit too long, just a tiny bit too long, and it could have trimmed some of the fat that it had with some like filler content sort of in the middle, specifically in the second act, but still overall a really entertaining movie. I could not recommend this one enough. This is definitely the most underrated in the trilogy. But then coming in at number one, we got Night of the Living Dead. Easily the most classic, the most timeless, and the most talked about film in this trilogy. I just really couldn't fathom putting anything else at number one. This is the one that I've really thought about the most. It's had the most time to marinate, and it's the film that I most consistently think about putting up to a 9 out of 10. So, again, if you want to see if I update that in the future, follow me on Letterboxd. But yeah, this is just an absolutely perfect example of low budget horror filmmaking that really is super, super inspirational to a lot of filmmakers, really revolutionary in terms of low budget horror and zombie flicks just in general. It is just an incredible film with some amazing stakes, some really, really well done tension and just a really creepy atmosphere almost similar to that of 1930s sort of universal horror. So Night of the Living Dead is number one in this trilogy for me. And that is going to do it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed, definitely make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel down below. I'm going to be kind of giving myself a little bit of a schedule now. So now I'm going to be trying to hold myself to three videos a week. So if you want to see all those videos, definitely make sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be the first to know every time I upload a brand new video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you agree with my ranking in the comments section. And that is basically it. My name is Dominic and I'll see you all in the next one.